All right, so how do we do QC at Slant 3D? Well, this is a really interesting problem. First of all, you have to establish what the quality of a print is. We have a video around here somewhere that you can click on and you can see what our parts should look like. We have several examples of different parts in different colors. If your parts are not up to that spec, reach out to us and we will refund or replace those parts free of charge. So that's the baseline there. If we screw up, we will absolutely own it and fix it. And we are making thousands of parts. There are some that will probably go wrong somewhere in this process. Process. But when the process is running right, this is what happens. A print shows up on the 3D printer. At that point, a technician grabs the part and they do a basic inspection of it in that moment. They say, oh, well, this is printed wrong or it was uploaded in the wrong orientation or there's a skip line or there's a pile of spaghetti there. If any of those things occur and that technician is able to see an obvious error with the part, they will hit reject inside of our Kraken production system, and then the part will go back into the system, maybe with a flag that need, means it needs to be manually inspected and re-sliced in some kind of a way, or just to be reprinted because maybe the machine has some defect. Again, with thousands of machines, machines can go out of tune or just wear out over time. That is the first inspection. The next inspection is at post-processing itself. Over there is when we go through these steps, and I'll go through those in a moment, but I wanna finish the whole thing. The post-processing is when really deep inspection occurs. They will remove supports, they will look at the part, make sure it matches up with the part that is supposed to be produced, and they will do uh, the main QC evaluation, which again is on this list that everybody is trained on. After that, it goes into warehousing, and then shipping grabs it, and shipping does a final inspection to make sure that all the parts are there according to the 3D model, if possible and reasonable. Sometimes people upload like 213 parts and it's not possible to count every single piece that pops off the bed. Don't do that. We got another video talking about that. But uh, shipping will do a final inspection on the parts. At any one of those three stages, someone can say, uh-uh, no and send the part back to be reprinted or fixed in some kind of a way. So there are those three checks. Stuff can still go wrong. Again, thousands of parts and people can go cross-eyed. But those are the three stages where people are looking at the part and can do some sort of evaluation on it. Now, post-processing is the main one where that inspection is happening. As I said, these are the rules that everybody follows. Whisk. With WISC, the very first thing they do is they inspect for warp. And the way you inspect for warp is that we have these little dials at each one of the thing, at each one of the stations, where somebody basically takes that flat part, has the piece right here, and they attempt to slide that one millimeter part underneath it. If any of the corners are warped beyond one millimeter, that gauge will slide underneath the part. And that means the part needs to go back and has some sort of warping issue. This doesn't come up very often, but it is how we inspect it because that gauge defi is defined as one millimeter. And if it can slide underneath the part, then the part is warped up to one millimeter. This generally only comes up with really large parts where there's so much shrink on it. The worst warping types of parts are potentially PET G, if you've designed it to be really thick and heavy, or matte black PLA. Whatever that colorant is causes that to warp really readily. The next thing in WISC is support, removal of support. The entire part is inspected to see if there's support inside of the holes or designed support that the person has put in. Technicians are trained on how to identify that support. It is best if you label it to say like, remove this. But if they see like a triangle with some sprues out of it, they're like, ah, that is support to be removed. But again, make sure that you're, if you are designing support that you make it very obvious. If it is ambiguous as to whether it is support or the part, we will send it with support inside of it because the last thing we wanna do is trim off a critical feature of your part. Next, you go to skip lines. Skip lines are just literally that. Is there some sort of blip or bump on the surface of the part? Or is the seam messed up because of retraction issues or again, the material flow or some piece of the part? These are kind of a range and can sometimes be ambiguous. If there's pockmarks all over the part, obviously that's something that needs to be reprinted because the, the filament, uh, the extruder is slowly jamming or something like that. Or there might be some issue with the filament itself that's causing contamination. But they will check effectively for pockmarks over the entire surface of the part to see are there gaps, are there holes, are there blobs, that kind of a thing. So they're looking for skips. Next up, you have shifts. These are mechanical errors. Is that part fully geometrically correct or did something shift or something along those lines? These are just a reality check with the actual 3D model that is sitting there on the table and on a slip of paper. So a person has a photo of the actual finished part and they will do a comparison with that to make sure that the part is the geometry that they are looking for. If it is, then they will pass it on through. And very last is coloration. This is most critical for light colors like yellow or white where contamination can become very prevalent and easy to spot on this. Uh, filament can burn out on this 
nozzle or there can be purge material or maybe a speck of dust on the bed or maybe some other color from a previous machine if the machines had to be converted into new colors that can cause staining basically on the first layer though they also inspect the rest of the part because again blobs or residual material can break loose or support material can fall into the part and cause that sort of an issue this overlaps with skips a little bit but they inspect for coloration and the rule for that is on the base layer are there any stains larger than one millimeter in diameter diameter. If it is smaller than that, it will remain. So if you have a speck of miscoloration, it is going on through because that is kind of the nature of the process. If you want to avoid those types of things, you can design stuff with a raft underneath it so that the part prints on top of that raft and that raft is sacrificial. So you know, you don't have to worry about stains from small pieces of dust. The other solution is to print it in dark colors because black never has stains. But those are the inspections that everybody does. Less than one millimeter of warp, make sure if the support is removed, if it is readily identifiable or has been generated and is different from the 3D model. Make sure there are no substantial skips or bumps or blips. Make sure there are no shifts or changes in geometry of the part. And then ensure that there are nothing larger than one millimeter diameter discolorations anywhere on the parts. So hopefully that gives you the context around the QC process for it. Again, if anybody sees any of those issues or if somebody sees something odd through where they're like, this doesn't seem like the part that the customer is expecting, we will send it on back and have it either reprinted or reevaluated. If parts come in and they don't appear to be printable, we will attempt to do a manual fix on them all. And if that manual fix is accepted, then we will apply it to that part everywhere into the future so that the client does not have to fix it themselves. This is how we fix things like reorientation or other sorts of issues like that, if it is necessary. We will always attempt to print the part as delivered. But very often when we're dealing with thousands of new users, people don't always know how to use the process. So we try to help as much as possible in order to make sure you get the best part you possibly can. And once again, if we deliver a part that you do not like, we will immediately refund or replace the part, no questions asked, aside from you telling us what the issue is so that we can hopefully fix it in the future. Have a great day, everybody.